different cultures eat different things. As we know, for instance, as North Americans, what do we eat? Pancakes. Hamburgers, pizza, Pancakes. fries, <laughs> Quebec we eat poutine and uh, uh, pancakes and crepe and all sorts of things. Different cultures eat different things. Uh, if you go to, to Europe, you have different uh, also cultures. Italians eat spaghetti and what? Pizza and pasta and lasagna, all these uh, different dishes. And um, well, before I start my message, actually, I want to share with you 10 very different dishes that I found as I was researching for my message. Uh, the number one that I want to share is bird's, bird's nest soup. How many of you tried bird's nest soup? <laughs> Some of you are not doing like this. <laughs> Well, the, the real bird's nest soup, it's not the one you eat at the Chinese buffet, but the real one, it's actually from the, uh, uh, the saliva of a, spe a specific bird. And, uh, and that's, that's why it's called bird's nest soup. And it's a delicacy, it's very good, and uh, you should try it. I tried the real one. Now, this one I never tried, this is from Cambodia, and it's fried tarantula. <laughs> So uh, they say it's, it's a, a delicacy too, I, I believe them, I just don't want to try it. <laughs> what about, about puffer fish? Puffer fish is a Japanese uh, plate. The problem with puffer fish is that the skin and internal organs of this fish are about uh, 1200 times stronger than cyanide. So, so if there's a mistake repairing the plate, so oh, I guess you eat the soup and it's heavenly. Because we both have <laughs> from the Philippines. We have someone from the Philippines here. <laughs> so balut, it's uh, fertilized boiled eggs, but there's a, a problem with these eggs. It's like a kinder surprise. Because uh, there's a seven-day gestation period in the chicken. So, where, so when the egg uh, is eaten, there's actually the little animal. Uh, uh, there, depending on your preference, can be 17 or 21 days. Uh, so, at the end of the service, I'll ask our Filipino <laughs> uh, uh, brothers and sisters to tell me if it's good because I've never tried this one. Now, from Italy, there's there's casumarzu from Sardinia, and this is an excellent cheese, but it's made with maggots. Actually, the maggots are getting the cheese. The cheese. Uh, kind of uh, gets rotten and it's one of the best Italian cheeses, they say. You want to try it? <laughs> now, another exotic thing from Sweden. I've been there for a while and this is... Uh, it's uh, surströmming. And, and, and the way they do this, these are herrings that go through a fermentation process. Actually, they used to have these cans in airplanes. They cannot have it anymore because they explode. They literally explode in supermarkets because fermentation continues inside the herring and so it's like, gives you like a whiny flavor, whiny taste. Uh, I have my number seven food line, octopus from Korea. We have a Korean seer also. Uh, and uh, I don't know, Jibong, if you ever tried live octopus. I love octopus, but I never tried this one. Uh, I'm almost done with my special foods from the world. Now this one, it's coffee luak. It's the most expensive coffee there is. It's about $300 a pound. And the uh, particular thing about this is that the luak, which is kind of a goat, eats the coffee, digests the coffee, and then they grab the poop, the luak, and they prepare this coffee, which is the most exp expensive coffee in the world. Starbucks doesn't even sell anything close to this one. Now another delicacy, puffin heart from Iceland. Iceland is not far from here, and, the, and puffin is a bird, and, uh, and, uh, and it's very, a very rare bird, and you eat the heart of the bird, that's the heart of the bird, it looks like something else. Oh, and the last one, snake wine from Vietnam. <laughs> I don't know if you would like to try snake wine from Vietnam. It's like, a, uh, you know, it's, there's, there's kind of a, a wine there, and you see a scorpion there, and the, the snake is behind. It's just to make it uh, look, you know, different. <laughs> and I guess probably they use this for decoration. I don't know if you want to try snake wine. So I, I just wanted to show you different foods of the world to tell you that there's different cultures, and we all know there are different cultures. And uh, 
Uh, many times we say, well, we are what we eat. Now, I'm not here to talk about this kind of food, but I'm here to talk about spiritual food. Because, you know, the Bible compares the Word of God to food. Actually, to, to milk, when we talk about basic things of the Word, the word and to uh, meat, when it talks about the depth of the Word. And I like to read a Bible verse, which is in, uh, uh, first in Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. And uh, it says, God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to work it and keep it. God commanded the man, saying, You may freely eat from every tree of the garden, but from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, do not eat. For on the day you eat from it, you surely die. So I wanted to show you how important food is. It's so important. It's so important that the first time man sinned was about food. Actually, scientists studying the different species on Earth, on Earth, they concluded that the main difference between mankind and other beasts and the animals of the field is that we learn how to cook. And there's not a lot of species that cook their food before they eat it. They eat it raw. There's actually the, um, a, a crab uh, in the Pacific Ocean that cooks food uh, and boils the food before eating the food. That's very interesting. So I guess it's the second one on the, <laughs> on the, on the, on the species on the, in, in terms of, uh, of uh, intelligence. But this is what makes us different. We like to cook. And we like good food. I don't want to try dried tarantulas, but if I had developed uh, my uh, flavor, my palate to that uh, delicacy, I'll probably like it. But I don't want even to try it because as we were growing up, our parents cooked different kinds of food. And sometimes uh, some people don't like to experience new things, others do. Well, the problem with Adam and Eve, they wanted to try something different. Are you following me? They wanted something different. So God placed these two trees, and one is called the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and another one is the tree of life. So they have access to all the trees. The best one is the tree of life, because you eat from that tree and you have life. How many of you would like to eat from that tree? <laughs> Healing, life, strength, eternal life. And now there's this other tree, and so the first thing that happened had to do with what they were eating. They, they chose the wrong food. Now, uh, I would like just to give you some examples of what I'm talking about, because when we're talking about these uh, matters of the tree of life, uh, what we can see in the Word of God, so that we have two trees, let me try to draw here the two trees. Uh, they're not very, very pretty, but okay. Here are two trees. You see the two trees? Yeah. So one is called the tree of knowledge, and the other one is called the tree of life. So everything we do with our lives, either spiritually or either in the natural, can be pointing to these two trees. We need to have the knowledge of what is good and evil. And you know what? In the world today, there's uh, people that are interested in mixing things so that you call good evil and evil good. Are you following me? Yes. So this is the world where we live in. People are mixed and so they, they, they go to the tree of knowledge. So the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it's the, the tree of logic. It's what people eat. It's a, in the spiritual sense, this is the, the tree of the soul. The tree of the soul, the soulish things. Now, the tree of life is the tree of the spirit. It's a different kind of fruit. It's, the, it's a fruit which is a spiritual fruit that will produce everlasting things, everlasting results in those who eat it. So, one of the problems we, we face in the world today is that people are eating from the tree of knowledge instead of eating from the tree of life. And there's a choice we can make. And I will give you examples, and I'll give you a few examples to show you how this applies in a practical sense to our life. The tree you choose to eat from is the tree that you will become eventually. So if you choose to eat from the, the tree 
of knowledge, you become a certain kind of person. If you decide to eat from the tree of life, you become another kind of person. So in, that, in this sense, this is my message today. You are what you eat. All right? So, uh, the, if you eat from the tree of knowledge, this is the tree of soul. And if you eat from the tree of life, this is the tree of the things of the Spirit. And everything you read in the Word of God points to these two uh, realities or trees. So, the Bible says that when we were dead in our sin, we were under a law, uh, which is uh, the, the law of death. But now, when we become born again, and this happens when you accept salvation from Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ died at the cross of Calvary, and He paid the price for the ransom of your soul. He paid for your sins. So when you give your life to Christ, you start to, you start to have access to eat from a different, different tree. You have access to the tree of life. You have, you have access to the things of the Spirit. Before, you were dead in, the, in your sins. You see, the tree of knowledge is the, the tree of death. And this one, we, we know by the name, it's the tree of life. So, you need to choose the tree you are eating from. Are you eating healthy food in the Spirit? Or are you still going to the tree of knowledge? You see, some Christians, they come to church, but they try to understand God with their minds. So they're always asking, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. Uh, can you explain me this? Can you explain me that? But you see, when we receive the Holy Spirit in us, we need to start eating from the right tree. We need to choose the right fruit. And we, it's not that we don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil because we're still here on earth, but we need to make our own choices. And in our choices, we need to, to choose between the things of the soul or between the things of the spirit. So that's your choice. That's not my choice. You choose what you eat. Listen, if you want to drink snake wine, that's up with you. If you want to, to, to eat fried tarantulas, that's up with you. I don't want to eat from that, from those uh, uh, you know, delicacies, so they, they call, because I make my choices. I prefer to eat a certain, a different kind of food. <coughs> Are you following me? Yes. So in the spirit, there's all these choices that we have to make. Now, in Genesis, uh, we're going to read this Bible verse. In Genesis uh, chapter 2, I, I know something uh, happened, but we will get there. So in Genesis chapter 2, Actually, before we go to Genesis, let me just uh, uh, read this, this verse so, so this will make more sense to you. In Hebrews 4.12, it says, For the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So this is what the Word of God is. You came here today to eat from the tree of life. When you eat from the tree of life, the, the Bible says the Word of God will pierce inside of you. And the comparison that we have between the things that are the soul and the things of the spirit, it's the, it's the example of bone and marrow, of uh, joints and marrow. So bone and marrow are exactly about the same thing. So if you see here on this picture, you see this is the marrow. And this is the bone. So the inside of the bone is the marrow. And it's compared to the things of the spirit. The outside of the bone, uh, this other area over here, it's the, the, the area of the things of the flesh. So this is what we, we call the bone. So here's the bone. And on the interior of the bone, you have the marrow. Now even scientists have a hard time to say where the bone finishes and when, where the marrow, uh, marrow starts. Because, you know, in this area, you know, th there's, there's a, 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 a very thin connection, but at one point, bone becomes marrow. Now, where does the soul end and the spirit starts? We don't know, but we know this, that the Word of God can pierce into the two areas, both, both bone and marrow. 
and bring some sort of division because it says piercing for us the division between soul and spirit. So in this sense, when we have this analogy of the bone and, and marrow, we have also uh, the, the analogy of the, of the two trees. And when we go back to Genesis 2, 9, it says, Out of the ground the Lord caused to grow every tree that is pleasing to the sight and good for food. The tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So the Lord created these two trees. They, they're good for food. Both of them are good for food. Both of them have their benefits. However, God established that man shouldn't touch that tree. But we did it. And that's why we're here. And in these last days, we see knowledge of things multiplying. Everything multiplies. In fact, there's even a, a, a law, they call it the Moore's Law. And every 10 years, in terms of technology, things become twice as fast, twice as small, twice as effective. And it's a law that you can apply to almost everything. Could you ever imagine having a, a little device, a little tablet, where I can write here and it shows right there? Can you ever imagine? You know, we will start very soon uh, uh, our, our second church there in Kanawaki. It's a, about half an hour drive, but they're going to watch our service live as we preach here. They're watching it there. Isn't that something? And this is the result of technology. Technology, why? Because knowledge is increasing. But let me give you an example. So I'll show you that you, you need to make sure what tree are you eating from. Let's talk about abortion, for instance. Abortion. Now, what do you think about abortion? It's up with you. But let me tell you one thing. Does the woman have right over her body? The tree of knowledge says the woman has right over her body. Now, if there's a situation of a rape and a child is conceived, or if the doctor says the child will be born with this terrible disease, doesn't the woman have the right to make choice or the father has the right? You see, that's the tree of knowledge. The tree of knowledge will tell you, woman, you have this right. You make your choice. Now the question is, let's bring it to the two trees. The question is, does it bring life or death? An abortion. So, if you go to the tree of life, is it right or wrong? Wrong. wrong. Okay, so you see, but in terms of everything we have in the world, the world is compelling us to make the choice for the tree of knowledge. Has a gay person the right to choose what they are? Has someone the right to say, I'm a man or a woman? When we see and when we go and we take these things to the tree of knowledge, of course they have the right. But if we take things to the tree of life, we know it's wrong. Why? Because we filter these things through the Word of God. So let's talk a little bit now about church. Now we come to church and as we come to church, uh, you know, we attend to services. We hear this service. And by the end of the service, we will receive uh, the Word of God. We will re receive a lot of information. And as we receive the Word of God and receive information, we can uh, have two different attitudes. Uh, in fact, when we talk about church and about the things that ha happen in, in the church, we have those people that get to the end of the service and they say, Wow, the Word of God was tremendous. I really received from God. God really spoke to me. Same service, same time. Another person will say, you know, it didn't make any sense to me. And I, I really didn't like, you know, the way that some things were going. You know, those songs, you know, those backgrounds uh, uh, behind the letters, uh, you know, moving, I felt really dizzy. I really didn't like church today. 
and, and, and uh, the seat is so hard. And, and you know what? I, I was analyzing the way they were playing, and I think the bass guitar was too low. It should be a little bit higher. And, uh, and when I came in, there were two ushers there at the door, and nobody shook hands with me. See, two different stories, same thing. Nothing wrong with the first person, nothing wrong with the second person, but something very different. The first person is eating from the tree of knowledge, and the, the second person is eating from a very different tree, from the tree, or, or the opposite, the second person is eating from the tree of life. So, uh, are, you, are you following the differences? So this is what we need to understand, is that uh, the tree that we eat from eventually becomes who we are. Are you following me? Yes. You, you're not lost with this conversation. No. All right. So, some Christians come to church and they think they're eating from the tree of life, but they're eating the wrong thing. Because they shape whatever they receive according to the pattern of the world. So if you come to church, the Bible says you need to become like a little child. You need to come willing to learn and to say, okay, I've always uh, thought that it's okay to be gay, it's okay for abortion, euthanasia, these things. I was raised in this pattern of the world, this is Canada. But now I come to church, I listen to something different. Question is, am I open? to go to the book, to open the Bible, to read the Bible, to take my own conclusions and to choose what am I going to eat from? Am I going to eat from what the media tells me, from what the school teachers are telling me? I'm, am I going to eat from what you know the news are telling me? Or am I going to make a choice and eat from the Bible and shape and pattern my life through the Word of God? That's your choice. And let me tell you, you are what you eat. In fact, I'm going to ask you to turn to the person next to you and tell that person, you are what you eat. That's good. <laughs> now the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, as a man thinks, so in, in his heart, so is he. Now, I'm going to, to give you another version. As a woman thinks in her heart, so is she. <laughs> so when, when the Bible says a man, very often he's talking about an individual, a person. So ladies, this is for you too. So as we think in our heart, that's who we are. Now the idea you have of yourself is very important. What do you think about yourself? You think you're a loser? Sometimes you're having a bad day and someone comes and attacks you verbally and you start to eat from that tree of knowledge that tells you all sorts of things and then you get upset and you have a bad, a poor image of yourself. Or do you wake, do you wake up in the morning? You spend some time reading the Word of God. You come to church on Sunday, you come during the week, you come and you want to learn and you feed yourself from the tree of life. And when that situation happens, there's a difference in your attitude. Why? Because when you eat from the right tree, you'll have the best results in your life. There's all sorts of diets. I've tried many and I, I'll continue to try many diets because once in a while, we, we all want to lose some weight. I know some of you would like to win some weight, to gain some weight. I can teach you how to gain weight. <laughs> but doctors always have these formulas. And on the radio they, they say, you don't need to diet. You don't need to do those stupid exercises. Go to the gym now, take this pill. And it's a miracle pill. In, in 30 days, you lose 30 pounds. And I'll have you lose 30 dollars. <laughs> You lose everything. But people try all sorts of things in order to lose weight. But the only thing that works, it's really your diet. It's what you eat. Of course, exercise, all sorts of things. 
But if you change your diet, you have drastic results. You know, I, I was uh, watching what, what is happening in Europe. They have a, an E. coli uh, uh, stream going on. It's, it's, uh, it's terrible. And now they found it's coming from biological farms. You know, it's dangerous to eat biological. <laughs> eat red meat. You don't have a problem with red meat. You don't have E. coli. You can have mad cow disease, but you won't have that problem. But you see, according to what you eat, you can become really ill. You can die from, from food poisoning. You can die from food poisoning. It's dangerous. Now, when you eat different kinds of spiritual things, and when you take things to the tree of knowledge, you will get all sorts of ideas. That's why some, sometimes you're uh, coming to church, but at the same time, you're reading books from Deepak uh, Chopra and uh, watching opera, uh, opera on TV, and, and you watch all these things, and now you're confused. Because those people are so good, so famous, they are on TV. <laughs> they get so much money to do what they do, they must be right. And you come to church and you listen to the Word of God, but then you make a choice. Are you going to take your ideas to the tree of knowledge of good and evil, or are you going to take those ideas to the Lord and to the tree of life? Amen? Amen? Yes. Now, in Acts 17, 26 to 28, we read a very important verse of Scripture. It says that God made, made us, uh, made man, from many nations, <coughs> amen, and uh, it says that God determined appointed, time, appointed times and boundaries for our habitation. So you're not here in Canada by accident. He made the nations and he determined and appointed the time and the place where we should live. Now, sometimes you can get an offer of a job and they can say, okay, I have a great job for you in China. And you, you go to China. It's okay. God will use you in China. The question is, are you in the right place at the right time? And this has to do with purpose. Because, and when we see the, the following verses, it says that they, will, they, that they will seek God. So, when we are in the purpose of God, we will seek God. We, we, we will seek Him. Perhaps they might grow for Him and find Him, though He's not far from each of us. And verse 28, it says, For in Him we live and move and exist. And even some of your own poets have said, For we are also His children. So, when we are... In the purpose of God, when we're in the purpose of God, we can find God. Mm -hmm. It all depends. What tree are you seeking? Listen, I have nothing against National Geographic, against all the science channel. I, I, I have nothing against the knowledge you can get from all sources. Read it, drink from it, but there's one source that is above all. And that's the Word of God. And you need to make your choice. Am I going to shape and pattern my life through the pattern of the world, the tree of knowledge, or the Word of God? Because of what I do, I'm very often on the internet. I like science. I like electronics. I was six years old when I fixed my first fridge. <laughs> And I kept fixing things. That's, that's part of my nature. So all of my mindset was towards science and logical. So when I started to go to church, it didn't make sense to me. How come the death of a person brought me life? It doesn't make sense to me. So I will refuse the truth of salvation. And I will say, how come we're going to be resurrected and encounter Jesus in the air and all these things in the book of Revelation these, these are fables anyways I've studied different religions 
I've read, you know, Oriental religions. I've read from uh, Muslim religions, from Mormon religions, all these things, and they all have their myths. Why should I believe in the Bible? The thing is, when I decided to eat from the tree of life, something happened on my inside. Because now when I read the Word of God, it makes sense. Before it didn't, but now it does. Why? Because now the Holy Spirit is in me. Is in me. And He speaks to you all things. All things that pertain to life. Now, when the, 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 the main thing of our life is to find God's purpose. Now, let me read another scripture. It's, it, uh, or, or before I read the scripture, let me just uh, tell you about the uh, purpose. I know that there is a purpose for me. I know that there is a purpose for you. So the main goal in my life is to find my purpose. Now, if you don't know the purpose, you have a choice. But I, I'm telling you, if you start eating from the tree of life, eventually you will find your purpose. There's many people lost in this world. There's people, you know, that have fame, they're, they're famous, they do great things, but their lives are empty. That's why you see all these celebrities going to jail. Some are so rich and they're, they're still, you know, uh, stealing things from the supermarket and all sorts of stupid things. They don't have a need to do those things, but they do it because on the inside, they're empty. <coughs> That's why then you see that this uh, other one committed suicide and the other one is on drugs and the other one is on rehab. And you see the life of these celebrities, they get married, they divorce, they get married again, they divorce, they get married again, and then their life is a mess, it's exposed to the world, and they're so famous. And they say, oh, but this person is a good singer, this person is a good actor. Is it the purpose of God for their life? Are they their purpose? I, re I read all these things about Britney Spears to find out this week that she started singing in the church. And she was a, a, a worship leader in the, in, the, in the youth group. Elvis Presley, same thing. He was singing in the church, that, that's where he learned how to sing. So we, we hear about all these celebrities that are famous, but they're out of God's purpose. Because eventually, in the turning point of their lives, they decided, I'm going to leap from the tree of this world. Good and evil. I'm going to the tree of knowledge. What profits a man to win the whole world and lose his soul? No profit. One day, you and me will meet God face to face. Some of us will be able to see His face. Others, you have to hide your face because of your sin and you'll be cast away in a real place called hell. I don't want that to happen. That's why I'm urging you this, this morning. Choose what you eat. Because eventually you become what you eat. Allow the Holy Spirit that lives in you to shape you, to find that purpose. And welcome the changes that God brings into your life. Because you're being changed according to His purpose. Even when bad things happen, you're being shamed because God has a higher purpose ahead for you. Amen. You might think, oh, pastor, but you don't know the life I'm living, you know, these problems I'm struggling with, all these things that are happening in my life. Is God really here? Is He taking care of me? Yes, He is. Yes. And many times He's allowing those problems, those hardships, those infirmities, because He has a higher plan a higher purpose. What you need to do is to make the choice between the right tree. And let me bring this message to a conclusion. Which one do you choose? Which tree do you want to eat from? Do you want to eat from the tree of knowledge or from the tree of life? This is really important. Listen, it's a choice between good and evil or it's the choice between uh, death and life. One is the tree of the soul, another one is the tree of the spirit. 
When you eat from the tree of knowledge, you will receive all sorts of good information. However, knowledge without God's wisdom will not take you anywhere. You see, the tree of knowledge will give you always a negative kind of impulse to things. It's always negative. The tree of knowledge will, will tell you, you know, don't do that, don't do this. But on the other hand, you go to the tree of life and you have faith. Which is the opposite of doubt. So when you have faith, you can achieve great things. And ultimately, knowledge, the tree of knowledge can get you to a certain position and can eventually get you where you want to be. But at the end, you have death. However, if you choose the tree of life, you might not be in the position that you want in terms of the, your social life, your wealth, your position in terms of the world. But at the end, you'll have the satisfaction one day having this encounter face to face with Jesus and He will tell you, well done, faithful servant. Just come in and enter in your final destination, your purpose. This is the word I want to listen to. So we need to watch our diet. What are you eating? Where are you drinking from? What kind of books do you read? I'm not saying it's wrong to read this book or go to the movies or go... No, but you need to learn how to balance things. What is my main diet? You see, uh, because of circumstances of, of life and age, I cannot eat a lot of sweets. I like them. But I have to say no. But once in a while, I eat them. <laughs> and some of you know what I'm talking about. You know it's not good for you, but once in a while you say, okay, just today, I'm in a wedding, let's eat everything. <laughs> so I'm not telling you that you need to be so separated from the world that you're just in church and you just read the Bible and you just listen to Christian music and you just say amen and hallelujah. I'm not telling you to do this other because you become a weirdo. <laughs> Nobody will want to have communication with you. They will say, this person, this man, this woman, maybe they're also, they connected with that guy that talked about the end of the world. See, you know, we really need to make our choices. However, what I choose to take my life into, it's what I will become. Whatever I sow, I will reap. Let us all stand. And I want to have a word of prayer with you. What are you sowing? What are you sowing with your words? See, many Christians come to church, but their life shows me that they've been eating from the wrong tree. Why? Because of the attitudes, because of, of the lack of gratitude in the heart. There's no heart for worship. There's no heart to love people. There's a selfishness that is staggering. Some people even move from one church to another church because they don't like the color of the wall or because they didn't like something that happened. But the first thing we need to, to ask is, Lord, where do you want me to be? See, when I came to the Lord, I was offered to go to this huge church that was flourishing. There was thousands of people in that church. But I, I, I really prayed about it because I wanted to know and the Lord kept me in a very traditional church, mainly with old people, singing old hymns. And the Lord told me, you stay here. And I decided to obey. And because I've obeyed, the Lord blessed me more and more and more and more and more. Because of the knowledge of knowing, I am where the Lord planted me. Amen. And before the Lord sends me somewhere else, I will not go by my own will. Because I've learned, in order to be in God's purpose, I'm not sometimes in the place of my satisfaction, but I'm in the place of blessing where the Lord strategically placed me for a purpose and for a season.